Hello and welcome back. Okay, I've got a kit today. Now this is the 4-bit digital electronic clock from Digispace. I do have to mention that this is a sponsored video. Digispace did send me these kits for free and there is a link to this one down in the description. So this is kit C51. It costs $2.25, so very cheap. One microchip. I like to see the resistor arrays being used and a small splattering of other components. Okay, so we've got parts list and a schematic. It's curious, the crystal is 12 megahertz. As a clock, I was expecting it to be something like a power of two multiple of a second. It is 12 megahertz. What's this? Okay, that's not a part number I recognize. Okay, so this is a W79E2051. As expected, it's a microcontroller. It seems fairly low end. It's got an internal RC oscillator and facility for a crystal, which is what this circuit is doing. Plus or minus 25% on the oscillator accuracy. I think they made the right call using the crystal for, for clock purposes. A few of these pins have uh, got slightly squished. Not the worst I've seen. It's just two resistors and they have the same value, so that's easy. Power rail is 5 volts. Alright, as always, I'm going to do the resistors first out of the lowest profile device. I have the soldering iron set at 360. You always should be going from the lowest profile to the highest profile devices. So I think the crystal would be next. I don't know where crystals sit in the hierarchy of component sensitivity. Let's treat it with respect. I think maybe the capacitor's next. Presume these connect each side of the crystal to ground, which is a configuration I see a lot in circuit diagrams. I'm trying to work out exactly where some of these components go. Been a little bit spoilt on some of the instructions of late. Now I'm pretty sure that this is the designation for the common pin and that will be where the spot is here on the resistor array. Now one thing that you do see is that the pins on the transistor do not line up with the holes. I see this a lot. I believe this is actually intentional 
it makes you bend the pins out and prevents you from having too short a set of leads to keep the transistor away from the heat. Looks OK to me. OK, so I can assume that this is C4. Looks like they're a bit squeezed for space on the labelling there. These buttons look almost square at a glance, but they're not in terms of the pin arrangements. She had one of these pins pop out slightly. Ah, I see. Looks like I got a tiny blob of solder onto one of the holes where these pins are supposed to go through. resolved. Now these capacitors are polarised so we have to make sure we put it in the right way. Positive is marked on the board. Negative is always this white stripe. Okay, there's actually six holes here and obviously two for the connector but that seems to work. I'm guessing this is actually lined up for a, a variety of different types of connector they could ship with it. One of the pins there isn't done right. All the polarities at least have been uh, very clearly shown. Okay, so I need to check the straightness of these pins. Sometimes with dip stuff, if I've had to straighten the pins, I plug it into a piece of breadboard rather than straight into the uh, socket or a PCB because it lets me uh, see what the pins are doing. No problems here though. Now I need to find out a way of giving it 5 volts. And a lot of my projects I've been using this cable, which is literally just an old USB wire. I stripped the end off. Now for screw terminals like this you could literally just strip the cables and plug them in. I think I'm going to be okay. Not what DuPont connectors are designed for, but it will work. Let's see if the circuit works. Now that is promising. Now the speaker is very piercing sound from here. I believe it's got the alarm functionality and all of that, which I was tapping through, but I don't have good documentation on that. So this sheet is all I have. An interesting project just to work out all of its functions. But as a little clock project, that works remarkably well. And it points together quite simply. I don't think the LEDs show up quite as well on the camera as they do in person. Well, this was a fun little project. It's you. Know, I didn't pay for it, but it's uh, less than two pounds sterling, which uh, almost certainly means that you're going to be predominantly paying for postage. But 
as a kit build, that was uh, that was quite fun. The documentation is very light. If you've uh, watched this video though, you've got uh, a direct guide for where all the components go. And there wasn't really any complexity in selecting what went to which location. There was a lot of stuff like the resistors, there was only one version of it, so um, there was uh, no particular complexity in working out which one belonged in which location. Well, I hope you found this interesting. It was a nice simpler side for me, and um, I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.